how to hack the Nintendo Game & Watch from start to finish. Now, if you watch my previous videos on hacking Nintendo Game & Watches, I've already hacked the Super Mario Brothers Game & Watch. You can follow the link in my description there for the video on that. And what we're going to do here is show you what we want to accomplish on the Zelda Game & Watch. Now, I haven't actually opened this one yet, and I haven't actually even hacked it yet, but I know that it's very similar to the process of hacking the Super Mario's one. So what we'll end up with is something like this, with Retro Go. And we will be able to play Game Boy games, Nintendo Entertainment System, and all sorts of cool emulators and stuff like that. So, with that aside, let's take a look at the Zelda Game & Watch. Now, I haven't even opened it yet, so I might as well just crack it open now. Pretty much exactly the same as the other Game & Watch, just branded Zelda and has the Zelda games and stuff like that. I mean, it's not exactly the same, it's different colors, stuff like that, but it's, you know what I mean, it's similar. So, let's take a look here. A little fancy. So, let's take it out of the package, put this stuff aside. Huh, shiny, fancy, new game and watch. Oh, that's cool. Huh, neat. Okay, so let's open it. So what I'm going to do here is, and what we need is a triangle hex screwdriver. So I have one right beside me, right here, and if you watch my other videos, this is the type of uh, triangle screwdriver that you need for this. So I'll pretty much take the four screws off at the back, one, two, three, four, and let me zoom in for you guys so it's a little bit easier to see. So. Let me take these screws off. Okay, so we have it open now, and if we take a look, as we can see, it looks very similar to the um, Super Mario Game & Watch. But there are a few differences. So, if we take a look here, this port here is our debug port. These are the pins we need to connect to to connect to our ST-Link. Now I'll put this into the description below, and if you watch my other videos, again, it's exactly the same tool that we used in my Super Mario Brothers Game & Watch hacking. So it's going to be the exact same thing as in my other videos. So if you want to watch the other videos, just to get a more in-depth view on how that works, go ahead and do that, but I'll try to explain as much as I can in, this, in these videos. Um, for anyone else that is new, just starting out doing this. So if you watch my other videos, you'll know the first pin we're not using, right here. The second pin we use. The third pin we use. The fourth pin we use. And the fifth pin we use. We don't use the sixth pin. So the first and sixth pin are not used for this. And once I have my debug ports set up, what I would do is get a connector like this that would plug into these connecting pieces. And I would plug them into those pins that I just described. So from pin two to pin five 
is where we want this connector. And I will show you guys later on where exactly these four wires are going to go to on the Game & Watch. So if you look at my computer screen now, I can actually show you what the difference is on the Zelda Game & Watch. Now it's a little bit different from the Mario Game & Watch. It's the same connections, but in different orientation. So what we need to do is take a look at our ST-Link board, and it will tell us where to put the pins. So in this example, it's showing me a Super Mario Brothers unit, Super Mario um, Game & Watch unit. So ignore this layout here. Our layout is going to look like this. Now again, if you watch my Super Mario one, you connect NRST, SWDIO, ground, and switch lock, SWCLK. What we're going to do is go into my soldering room now, and I will show you guys on the video where I'm soldering these points on the board on my actual Game & Watch. And then I'll show you where those wires go to on the ST-Link. So I'm going to pause the video for now, and then we'll go back into that room and make those connections. Okay, so I'm in my soldering room now to make the connections from the debug port on the Zelda Game & Watch to successfully connect to our ST-Link. Now, it's not that difficult to do. It might sound hard at first, but pretty much all we're doing is connecting... Um, the proper ports from here onto our ST-Link. So let's get started here. So what I want to do is write down um, on my on a piece of paper here where the actual pins or what the actual pins on my ST-Link are called. So I'm going to use my phone here and use this image here which is telling us for the old Super Mario Game & Watch where the pins are supposed to line up, but what I'm going to do, since the Zelda Game & Watch is different, I'm going to write down um, the pin locations for my ST-Link, and then we're going to take a look at the pin locations on the Zelda Game & Watch and match them up correctly. So, if I look here on, so SWCLK will be the second pin in, so pin one, pin two, so the second pin in is S W C L K. And, uh, sorry about my atrocious writing, but that's just the way it is. And our next one we're going to skip, which is VDD. We don't need VDD, as far as I know. So we're going to go to ground, and ground is the third pin. So we're going to write ground for third pin, and our fourth pin our fourth pin is SWDIO. So S W D I O. And our last one is NRST. So pin five is NRST. So when I take a look at my screenshot here for the Zelda Game and Watch, what we see is where we need to line up the pins for our ST-Link. So if you take a look closely there on this image, 
you'll see a arrow right here. That's where the pins start. So it goes NRST, SWDIO, ground, we skip VDD, and then SWCLK. So we go back to our drawings here. We know number two is SWCLK, three is ground, four is SWDIO, and five is NRST. So we want to make these connections from pin one, two, three, and five. So we're making connections from pin one, two, three, skip number four, and five. And we ignore the rest of the pins. So what I'm gonna do is that now. But before I do that, I just wanna show you the connector that I'm using. If you guys have watched my previous videos, you'll know that I don't make the best connectors. So if you wanna clean up and make a better connector from this ST link to connect to your Game & Watch, by all means, go ahead and make better connections with the proper color codes. But what I just do is just to make it work. So I have three connections here and I actually use this one as my fourth connection. So you need four connections in total. We'll get to that after we do our soldering. So again, you need to do one, two, three, skip four and five. So I'm going to solder those now. Now, if you guys are not the best at soldering, I'm getting better, but I'm not the best, you can get the uh, debug clips, and they actually just clip onto these uh, debug ports here. Instead of having to solder on connections, you can just clip debug ports, if you're not very good with soldering. So I'm gonna fire up my soldering iron here, and I'm going to get these wires ready and soldered onto the Game & Watch. So, my connection. So these are the wires I'm going to be connecting to the Game & Watch to connect to our ST-Link. Just trying to zoom in for you guys so it's easier to see. All right. And of course, like I said, I'm not the best at soldering, so I forgot to use flux. So if you want to use a, a little bit of flux on here, just put it on the debug port, and that will make your life a lot easier. One, two, three, four. Okay. So here we want to make sure that we're matching up the pins correctly. So whatever um, wiring harness that you're going to use, you just need to make sure that the pins are going to match up to the correct spots on your ST link. And again, we, we looked on here. Sorry, let me zoom out. We looked on here to map it out for our ST link. So now we can solder on the correct spots. So. I have to look at my picture for reference. So the first pin's NRST. 
which is actually pin 5 on my ST link. So if I were to be using pin 5 on the ST link, I just got to figure out what so wire I'm going to solder on. So you'd go from there. You'd go. Sorry for the glare. So NRST is 5. SWDIO is 4. Ground is 3. And SWCLK is 2. So you're just matching up with these pins here to your ST link where I showed you earlier in the video. So this ST link with the four pins is going to connect to these four points that we just soldered onto the board of our Game & Watch. So, let me take a look. I'm going to attempt to solder on my connections if I can find them. Okay, so I found the uh, port that I was missing and I soldered it onto the board here. Now I don't have the best connection soldered there, but they are not touching and they will work for me because the gaming watch still turns on. And by the way, I forgot to take the battery out. Um, just make sure you just connect the battery when you guys do this, just in case. So that's how you take it off. You just pop it up like this and it pops right off. So now you just want to test to make sure it still works. Didn't uh, bridge any connections. Oh yes, it's still working. I'm going to turn it off and I just show you guys the end result here. So again, I don't make the best uh, debug port connections, but um, this will work for me. So what I have here is a connector with three pins and then my extra fourth pin, because I don't have four pin connectors. If you guys had four pin connectors, you could use them. And what I've done is uh, plugged in the correct pins, like I was explaining earlier. I wrote them down so I wouldn't get confused. So this is the layout for uh, this ST link, and I just matched it up with the image that I had online. And I'll give everyone credit for um, all the tutorials and the guides and stuff like that um, at the end of my video. But here we are here, if you take a look, I just matched these pins up with what we figured out was for my ST link. So that's where the wires go. And when I make a connection with my ST link, with this connector that I made, Um, the ST link should now be able to communicate via USB to our computer and through Linux and we should be able to put RetroGo on now. So what I'm going to do is make this one video and then I'll make another video showing you guys on the computer how to get RetroGo working. So thanks for watching and please subscribe and like the video.